Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium everybody. Today's video is all about my DIY protein skimmer. I want to explain a little bit of how this skimmer works, the style of this skimmer, a bit about why I went with a DIY skimmer versus buying a commercially available skimmer, and finally talk about why the skimmer is sitting here on my basement floor and not in the 265 gallon sump going through testing. To start off, this skimmer is a recirculating style of skimmer. How a recirculating skimmer works is you have pumps that recirculate water within the skimmer chamber and it goes between the outer chamber and your main skimmer body and the inner bubble chamber. And it just recirculates that water in there injecting air and micro bubbles in to help generate your foam that ultimately goes up the skimmer's neck and into the cup. Now a lot of times in recirculating skimmers, especially big ones, not only do you have pumps dedicated to recirculating water with needle wheels, you also have to have a dedicated feed pump. Now that is one difference with this skimmer is that I'm not in a traditional sense using a dedicated feed pump for this skimmer because the pump that's actually feeding this skimmer is the return pump for the 400 and the water storage tanks. Now this skimmer is actually using gravity feeds to have water enter the skimmer on one side, which there's a gravity feed line on the other side, and then exit on these other drain lines here for the skimmer, which allows me to control the water height of the skimmer and also the amount of water that flows into the skimmer body. So that's one thing I've enjoyed about this skimmer is the fact that it's a little unique in using this gravity feed feature. I know it's not the first one out there. I know there's others out there that do it, but that's one thing that I really like about this skimmer is that it takes advantage of gravity from a drain line without having to use another pump and more energy to, to power the system. So it's a very simple skimmer in its design and operation. Moving on to why I went with DIY. Well, there were a few factors behind that. The primary one was cost. When I started looking at commercially sized skimmers for the size tank I had, it was moving into the several thousand dollar category to get one of these skimmers. The pumps were expensive. They seemed undersized for the skimmers that they had or oversized and, and giant and really power hungry pumps. And, on top of that, when I thought about making a gravity feed skimmer, it kind of made me go, I just don't want to buy any of these. I could build something for a much lower cost because let's face it, a protein skimmer, all it is, is a way to blow bubbles in the water. It's not to take away from any of the engineering and principles of how they work to become efficient and, and do a good job, but really that's all it is. You're blowing bubbles in the water it's not that hard and I think I could prove that by just building this skimmer which has performed excellent for years and that's one thing with DIY I'll say is that if you're willing to take some chances build some things on your own and be willing to to be the person that's doing the tweaking and upgrading and the modifications it's a great route to go save you a lot of money also, it gives you some good pride that you can say, hey, you built that. I'm very proud of this skimmer. It operated for years on my old system, and I always felt that it was so oversized for that system that I could have gone with something much smaller and been just fine. But that's the reason I'm keeping it on the new system is I think it's going to be a little more appropriately sized. And I've got some other plans for this skimmer to turbocharge it, which kind of leads a little bit into why the skimmer is out here on the basement floor. When you build DIY things, well, sometimes you find design flaws. And when I initially was testing the gravity feed coming from the 400 in the water storage tanks, I was having a real big problem with getting the water level to the appropriate height in the skimmer. The highest I could get it was here. And I was kind of doing a magic trick because I go, well, if it's not coming out of the standpipe and it's not 
uh, it's not pouring out on the floor somewhere, that means there's got to be a significant leak in this skimmer bottom. Now, on this skimmer, it's a cone bottom inductor tank that's a roto molded HDPE tank. I flipped this tank upside down, so really the top of the tank is on the bottom, which is where there's a 16 inch lid. And when I pulled the skimmer out, I suspected that a couple of bulkhead fittings I had were probably leaking a bit, but I knew that lid had to be part of it as the leak had to be on the order of letting out several thousand gallons per hour of water flow through it to completely halt the flow in here. And what I found was not surprising, but not exactly what I expected. The screw-on lid has a plastic ring that actually mounts to the HDPE tank. What I found is three out of the eight nylon bolts that I had holding that ring to the tank had sheared off. So when you pulled on it, a huge gap would open up. And pulling a little bit harder, I snapped a couple more of those nylon bolts off. So I knew that's where my problem was. And Honestly, when I looked at that design, I said eight nylon bolts holding on uh, this ring, and I th started thinking about the amount of weight that lid has to hold back. Being a 60 gallon inductor tank, if you take 60 gallons, which more or less it has in it when it's full, and you do the math at eight pounds per gallon for seawater, that's 480 pounds. Time. You know, you divide that by eight, that puts 60 pounds of pressure on each one of those nylon bolts. So that's a lot of force on a piece of nylon that's a, a quarter 20 nylon bolt. And considering three of them were broke, it was probably just a matter of time before the rest of them eventually failed. And nylon's not the best material in seawater. It does absorb water, and usually you'll hear people say, well, don't use it underwater. You can. Uh, but it, it does lose a little bit of its strength. As you can tell with this skimmer, uh, it didn't hold out. But I decided uh, I'm going to stick with nylon because I don't like metals in my tank at all. I don't, I don't care what grade they are. I just don't trust them in seawater. Therefore, I went ahead and I strengthened and reinforced by adding more nylon bolts, I went from 8 to 32 nylon bolts. That should take it down to about 15 pounds of pressure on each one of those nylon bolts instead of 60. I also siliconed the, the ring on and I siliconed the lid on. I don't think that the lid's going to leak anymore. We'll see though when we actually test it because right after I shoot this video, that's going to be what I do is get this back in there and, and test it out. The other thing I did as well was I replaced a couple of the bulkhead fittings that I had on here. I didn't know about Uniseals five years ago when I was building this tank and I just used a couple of bulkhead fittings on the sides and because this tank is not a flat surface there's always going to be a bit of leaking there. I decided one of those bulkheads was loose and I could not tighten or loosen it due to some marine growth on the threads of the bulkhead so I had to cut it off. And the other one had been loose that needed a, it needed to be tightened. I said, you know what, the Uniseals don't have that problem, let's just install them. So I installed Uniseal here and on the other gravity feed line on the other side. And that is when I decided to modify this skimmer a little bit, thinking about the future. Originally, with this skimmer, I was going to have the 400, the water storage tanks, plumbed into the skimmer to directly have that gravity feed. And then when my display came online, I was like, I could swap it out, change that plumbing, and then maybe add another gravity feed line. And I started going, you know, that's going to be a big job. It's not fun pulling this skimmer out of here, as I kind of show the video of, you know, getting the skimmer out of this tank is a... Uh, about a 10-15 minute process it involves a lot of heavy lifting, spilling a little water on the floor that you just can't avoid, and a lot of tedious work around other pieces of plumbing so you don't break things. So I really don't want to have to do that anymore if I can help it. And I decided I'm going to add in a second gravity feed and a second gravity drain 
right now because it's out of the tank. And that's what I did. So here, this line here is the second gravity feed that will be from the main display. I did put it up just a little bit higher in the tank because it will be convenient. I could go over the top of my recirculating pump plumbing and not lose any more real estate around the tank where there's ballast uh, holding it down because this skimmer is buoyant. So I do hold it down with four cinder blocks because uh, HGPE plastic floats. And so does the PVC sheet that it's mounted to. Uh, but I added a second gravity feed in and a second gravity drain out. For now, when I, I put them at, back into the tank and start testing, I'm just going to cap them off. So they're just not needed right now, so they'll get capped. Once uh, that display comes online, though, we'll, we'll put more gravity feed into it. and We'll start testing it out to see if we need a second drain line or if I can get a siphon going to kind of balance that whole drain flow out. But that is the DIY skimmer. I'm looking forward to getting this into the tank today and testing it out. We'll talk about how it did on my next update video. If you have any comments or questions on the DIY skimmer, go ahead and leave them down below. As always, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.